National MP Erica Stanford and Labor MP Jenny Anderson join us this morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, now, we had we had Stephen Drummond on the show just before the news, um, the father of Tyrese... Uh, sorry, the father of Giovanni, uh, who, who tragically died in this mm. crash. And he had a message that he wanted to share with you guys in relation to Tyrese coming out on parole early. Let's take a listen. It's about the living. It's not about the dead when you go to the justice system. We got told right from the start we can't bring your kids back. It's about the the, the system of um, working for Tyrese so he doesn't take his own life. That's what we got told right from the start. Jenny, is our justice system fit for purpose? Is it there for the living or is it there for those people who've, who've lost their lives who were victims? Well, first, I just want to say what a horrific loss, not only for all of those families, but I know the entire community was impacted by having so many young people lose their lives in one tragic event. And I can't imagine how parents would deal with that, that loss. And that was what I heard in some of those interviews. As the, it was, a focus was more on the loss of, the, of that young person and wanting them back again. That was what I heard the most. We, we do want to have a, a, a justice system that's far more victim-centric, so having victim support, having victims assistance scheme, those sorts of things are really important. But it's not for me as the current minister or for other MPs to be able to uh, pass judgment on what the parole board determines. Mm. So that, that's quite separate from what MPs But what about do. the initial sentence? Uh, you know, when, when things happen, we review laws and things. Is this something that's happened that now we need to review our laws? Uh, right. Uh, what I want to see and have been um, seeing some of that change is a lens with victims front and centre right through our whole justice system. And I think that holds the key to actually uh, get some of those blockages and those hold-ups that we see through the justice system. If we put victims front and centre, then I think situations like the one that we've just seen, might bring um, a bit more relief to those those people who are grieving. Mm, Erica, do you have some comments? Oh, it's just an unimaginable yeah. tragedy. And as a parent of a teenager, it is your worst nightmare. I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through, that crushing grief. And we heard in the victim impact statements, and again today, that they've said it is a life sentence. Uh, and it's really, it is disappointing that they felt that the, the, them as the victims weren't at the heart of the justice system. That, uh, you know, as Ginny said, we, we can't pass judgment on, on the parole board's decision. Um, that's not, not our, uh, our role. Um, but certainly having victims as the centre of our justice system is so very important. It's why, in part, we talked prior to the election around uh, canning the victim impact, uh, sorry, not victim impact, the, um, they're very important, the uh, cultural reports uh, and using that money instead to support victims uh, like those families. And we want to see more of that. Uh, an open letter has been sent out this morning from a group of organisations worried about this RAM raid bill. They want to stop this RAM raid bill. They say that, well, today was the last day of consultation. Ginny, how does this work? Because you're in a caretaker government, why is today the last day of consultation on this and what happens from here? Uh, so that was a bill that was introduced and received a first reading um, under our government. It's then referred to the select committee where anyone's able to put a submission on it. That's the last day for submissions. And then there'll be a second reading. It'll be for the incoming government to determine uh, what happens at that second reading. Uh, National did vote for that bill along with Labor uh, when we had its first reading, but parties can change their mind on their second reading. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note, and I, I've read the letter, that um, the problem we, we are addressing is that we had 12 and 13 year old young offenders, particularly doing ram raids, uh, who would be out the next day. So because of their age, they were being immediately released back out into the community. That was a danger to themselves and also a danger to those people. So by giving judges and police extra tools to be able to assist young people get into safe spaces and prevent them committing crime again, that's what that's designed to do. It is not a way of locking up young people, it works hand in glove with the circuit breaker program which goes in and identifies the underlying drivers of what's committing that crime in the first place. Eric, I know it's very early on, you're still negotiating things, we still don't have all the votes in, but do you believe that you will continue to support this bill through? 
Look, we'll have to make that decision once we have reviewed what's happened at Select Committee. And what happens uh, usually is it will go on the order paper. We've got obviously our own priorities as well, so it'll just be something that goes in the mix. And that after, after uh, we've formed a government, we will take a look at that. Uh, it's, it's, look, it's not something that I've got any oversight over or uh, any understanding of whether or not we will carry it forward. But like Jenny said, we did support it at first reading, but we're always very interested to see what happens at the Select Committee process and what some of the feedback was. So we'll take a really good look at that and we'll make decisions, obviously, at a later, sta at a later stage. Mm. Now, the election was obviously at the weekend and we're still waiting for those votes to be counted. What actually happens in this time? What are you guys doing 9 to 5 or 6 a.m. till 10 p.m., whatever your hours are? Erica, what's, what are you up to at the moment? Um, well, there's not much I can do down in Wellington <laughs> apart from welcome some of our new MPs. Uh, what I've been doing is focusing back on my uh, constituency. So I've got a few uh, issues arising in my electorate. I've got Massey Albany uh, uh, losing some of their science department, so I'm, I'm actively working there to see what I can do and help, uh, and just spending a lot more time in my electorate office with my staff uh, and making sure that I'm, I'm just a bit more present in the electorate. You did very well in the election. You had a 16,500 uh, vote majority in your electorate. Were you pretty pleased with that? Landslide, I would say. Oh, look, of course. Um, I'm so grateful to the people of the East Coast Bays for putting their support back in me and asking me to do another three years. I think it, you know, it goes to show that it's really important you don't just turn up before an election. It's that three, you know, your whole period that you have to work really, really hard in, uh, not just turn up on, you know, a few weeks before the election and say, hey, vote for me. And I've been really focused on my electorate for the last six years. I mean, it's my home. I love it. Um, so I'm really proud. Jenny... You weren't so fortunate to, to gain that seat again, regain that seat. What what do you think went wrong? Uh, look, we, we were really close uh, when we looked across the country. Uh, we uh, worked incredibly hard. I should probably um, give thanks to all my volunteers who worked. You know, we were door knocking in Easter, so right early on we worked incredibly hard on the ground. But I think there were a number of things that Labor needs to take a look at right across our whole campaign and go back to some of those communities that clearly we weren't connecting with or, uh, or listening to, and I think Auckland's that area that we need to do a whole lot of work mm. in. But also your area, people didn't vote for you. Uh, well, a thousand, well, people did, a thousand, but a thousand yeah. more voted for Crispin. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And we'll have to wait for those specials. I've kind of given up hoping on the specials. I don't think that's going to get me over the line. But, you know, a good amount of people um, still, still did vote, and I really thank those people who back me, and I do get lots of support locally. I still am lucky enough to be a list MP. I'm really grateful to still be able to go back to Parliament and I will still be doing my job in the um, in the community of helping people whether they need a house or uh, a job or a school uniform or a bit extra for food. We still do all those important work um, for people who need that help and yeah. I like doing that. And what about in your role as the, in the caretaker government? You know, you've, you've got some ministries there. What are you able to do at the moment or not able to do? Uh, well, the caretaker role is an interesting one, so it's no big decisions, obviously, but I've got justice, police, digital communications, uh, associate treaty, uh, small business and seniors. So I still see papers for all of those papers, for all those areas, and there's still some uh, regular work that ticks over that has to be keeping going. And it's the responsibility of the outgoing government to make sure that the transition is as smooth as possible because that's the best thing for, for all New Zealanders. Thank you for your time this morning. We're going to miss you. Oh, thank you. You've done yeah, a great job. You've been great. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's Six National months. MP Erica Stanford and Labor MP Ginny Anderson for my final political panel on a Friday.